The anonymous nature of the internet allows for a lot of different possibilities. By making an online persona, you can reinvent yourself and what you represent to occupy a virtual space. That being said, anonymity can also allow those with audiences to deceive viewers into believing things that are simply untrue. Today's story involves YouTube fame, faking your death, and virtual YouTubers. It's honestly one of the most interesting stories I've seen online in some time. So, let's talk about it. What's up guys and welcome back to the Tom Dark channel. I'm your host, Tom Dark, and today I will be talking about VTubers again. Feels like I'm turning into a VTuber news channel with the amount of videos about these guys I've done. In fact, this YouTuber I know by the name of Turkey Tom just did a great video on his channel about the Kiryu Coco situation. And it was pretty good if I say so myself. I mean, you know, the editing was pretty good. The writing was great. I would highly recommend you guys go and check it out if you have the time. After you watch this video, of course. But today's video is talking about something kind of interesting from the VTuber community. A story brewing in the community where a new personality in the space is rumored to be, alleged to be someone from the Team Fortress 2 community who faked his own death years ago. Once upon a time, there was a YouTuber named SketchEck. He made videos within the TF2 community and had a pretty loyal fan base. He was not the most popular in the world, but he did have nearly 40,000 subscribers. Within the community, he was respected for his in-game skills and abilities, as well as his very fast-paced and interesting videos. He was not the biggest channel in the world, but he didn't need to be, and he seemed more concerned with consistent quality of his content above raw popularity in any way. It seemed like everything was going well for SketchEck until 2015, when he posted a video saying that he had a terminal illness and about a year left to live. He sounded pretty somber and emotional in the video, saying that doctors told him he did not have a ton of time left. He would need to have constant life support at some point, he had already been in and out of the hospital, and because of these complications, he hadn't really had time to make videos. Not only that, but he wouldn't have a lot of time left on YouTube, he was dying. Which is fucking terrible, and obviously a lot of people felt bad for him. Hey, I'm the guy that runs this channel. Most of you probably know me as Skechik. Um, I'm going to try being as straightforward and honest as I can with you guys for once. I know I tend to play this character that's really aloof and sarcastic when I'm on the internet, but this is actually a serious ordeal, so I'm going to put that aside for just a second. Truth is, I've been very sick and very busy for the past few months, spending every day either bedridden or going in and out of the hospital with no time to play TF2 or make videos or anything like that. Um, I don't want to reveal too much information about my illness, but the doctors are saying that I probably don't have a lot of time left. At best, I've got about a year before my condition gets so bad that I'll need constant life support, and my chances of recovery are looking, uh, low, to say the least. The comment section was filled with people who expressed their condolences and mourned his assumed passing. I wish I knew him sooner. People still speak his name to this day. Subtle references to a god of all pyros, the legend that spoke in murmurs. I will never know him in his prime, but I can look over the past and see how he's changed this community and appreciate how he made so many people happy. I hope he finds peace, and for everyone else that sees this comment, I hope life treats you well. Godspeed and God bless all you magnificent bastards. His viewers were heartbroken. I mean, someone who they watched, who was a well-known member of the TF2 community, was going to pass away. He was in the process of fucking dying. Obviously, a lot of people felt really bad for him. The final goodbye video he posted was titled Closure, where he said he had some new thoughts on life, and did not plan to return to YouTube. He was closing the chapter of his life involving the channel to try and refocus on other important things in the last moments of his time on Earth. Welp, this is it, folks. This is how it ends. I'm very ill, my health is gradually deteriorating, and the clock is ticking, so to speak. I simply cannot afford to spend any more time than I already have maintaining the channel. This is my absolute final video to say goodbye before I stop using this account. So, feel free to unsubscribe if you haven't already. There will be no more videos coming from this channel. Farewell. And as with many other YouTubers, Skechik was anonymous. People did not know much about him apart from the fact that he was good at playing Pyro in the game and likes to post videos to YouTube. There were some things about his personality that came out in the videos, of course, but any other specific details about his location or identity 
were just kind of nothing. Skechik did not have a lot of ties between his real life and his online content, making them extremely easy to sever as well. People just kind of believed him when he said he had some unknown terminal illness because why wouldn't they? They had no reason to think he wasn't being truthful. The guy was going through a hard time and saying goodbye to some things in his life so that he could spend what little time he had left with those that really mattered to him, right? Having those last experiences were really important and everyone wanted to respect that. Following the release of this video, Skechik left the internet altogether for three years. That means no videos, no social media posts, no Steam activity, no booting up TF2 and ending up in some lobbies did not happen. He was just straight up gone from the internet. He said in his video that he did not have much time left, so everyone was like, oh, well, he died, I guess. It's over. People talked about his existence in passing from this point onward in the same way many will reference like KDO706 today, a talented creator in the gaming community who passed too soon due to a terminal illness. But one day, his subscribers were surprised to see a new Skechik video in their subscriptions. After all of this time, somehow he had returned to YouTube. I mean, how is this possible? Was someone else posting videos to his channel? How is it possible that he could be posting YouTube videos again in the same style of content he was making before? It was like he had gone away to college or something and then come right back. Everyone assumed he had been dead, but he wasn't. He was not some corpse making videos from beyond the grave, sadly. There's no, uh, there's no creepypasta here, okay? He just never died. So there were some mixed reactions to his return for sure. Some thought he should explain himself at some point, and some thought it was cool that he came back at all to make videos in any capacity. I mean, did he, like, make it through whatever illness he had and was now back after reevaluating some of his personal life and he just hadn't felt the need to, like, come back to YouTube in this, you know, three-year span? Did he ever have any illness in the first place? What's the deal here? Of course, it couldn't go totally unaddressed. While he didn't address it in like the first day he came back, he knew he had to say something at some point. On the Team Fortress TV forums, some people asked if he was back, and he actually decided to find the thread and reply to it and give his own explanation. Hey, Skechek here. Sage's post is mostly accurate. The illness was a lie. Sorry, I just wanted to clarify that I've been working on an apology video since before I started the ARG. I said to some other people that I reached out to, but forgot to tell Sage. Also, the hacker you guys were talking about wasn't me. It was an impersonator by the name of Autogen. I didn't have access to a PC at the time he was doing that. We'll explain more in the video, which should be up tomorrow. Sorry. So, yeah. It was all just a lie. He never had any real illness. In the video where he apologized for what happened, he stated that he basically felt like video games and the internet had taken up way too much of his life, so he just devised this crazy falsehood as a way to leave the internet. He kind of saw it as a joke, albeit a somewhat cruel one, obviously, but he was now like done with that part of his life and he was back online. Now, some people were definitely mad at him, make no mistake. His return video had about 30% dislikes and 60% likes, which is a pretty significant, you know, difference in the ratio. Most people on an average video will get like 95 to 99% likes. So quite a few people did have criticisms of him and they voiced that in videos on YouTube as well. And while I don't, completely disagree with what they're saying about him. I mean, I guess what he did is kind of fucked up, but I personally just don't really care. I did not watch his videos, nor do I have any personal investment in the SketchX story, nor have I had any family members deal with any like real terminal illness. So I don't have much to say about this. Like, yes, it sucks and what he did is bad on paper, but I'm not gonna sit here and pretend to be angry about it because I'm not, I just like the story. And at the very least, SketchX did provide that. People were invested in the drama and several videos which surpassed his sub count and views were made talking about the entire thing. The story was so interesting that mainstream sources like Kotaku even published articles detailing the events of the whole thing. Despite his relatively small channel size, the drama generated from this incident really got people enthralled. But after this, it was like any semblance of the drama was just over kind of abruptly. You could take him or leave him at his word, but he was back making videos. And for what it's worth, his videos are pretty well done in terms of gaming content on YouTube. They're certainly a step above what most people do, so I can see why his audience liked his stuff so much. At a certain point, people just kind of drops the entire thing because, well, what are they going to do about it? Just like be angry forever? If he came back and apologized, your options past criticizing him are to either watch his videos or not watch them. And a lot of people did watch him once he was back and posting videos consistently. So despite faking his own death for years on the internet, Skechik had come back and, you know, he got a little controversy for sure, but people still watched his videos. He had made it. So he kept posting those videos after this for a little while, and it seemed like everything was going well. But very recently, some people noticed that Skechik had privated all of his videos. It seems like he was doing fine and his channel was doing 
doing pretty well. Like what, what happened? Why would he do this? Why would he wipe his entire channel? His Twitter account also went private at the same time. No one has an answer for sure, but there are multiple theories floating around right now as to where he went, one of which I personally believe in. Skechik left his channel behind to become a VTuber signed to Nisanji. Yeah, sounds fucking crazy, right? Especially given everything that's happened so far, but it's not totally out of the realm of possibility. The reason some people believe this are not totally concrete, so I can't like pretend like they are. It's not like we got like DNA evidence. It's not, it's not, it's not even close to that, okay? So in the end, it's going to be up to you guys to decide if you think this is really Skechik in the end, but I'm not going to beat around the bush. I personally think it's him. Now, Nisanji, much like Hololive, is an agency which helps manage VTuber personalities. They debut them in waves and roll out new personalities for fans to enjoy. They are a talent agency dedicated to finding people who could be good entertainers and then platforming them with avatars and promotion and stuff like that. Recently, they premiered a new generation of these talents, including a blonde haired anime boy by the name of Sonny Briscoe. Here is a clip from his introductory stream. Hey, drop the mouse. Keep your cursor where I can see it. Don't even think about clicking away from my debut stream or I'll, I'll be really upset. And I'll arrest you, okay? Good. Now dig the dust out of your ears and listen. I'm Commanding Officer Sonny Briscoe of the Virtual Special Forces. We're deployed to deal with only the most extreme cybercrimes like hacking government networks, violent cyber attacks, and cheating in video games. If you haven't already picked up on the reason for me playing this, um, they sound extremely familiar. Skechik has an eerily similar voice to that of Sonny Briscoe, but that alone is not enough to think it's him, right? There has to be more than that. Any two people could sound pretty similar, and that's true. Well, for one other piece of circumstantial evidence, the Skechik channel was cleaned out and the Twitter was privated right before Sonny Briscoe launched his own VTuber career. I've also seen a lot of people talking about the fact that Skechik can speak Japanese and also lived in Japan for some time. This would, at the very least, explain his familiarity with the culture and the fact that Sonny Briscoe is clearly bilingual, easily switching between the two languages while live. And, uh... Okay, yeah, that's about it. There's not a lot. <laughs> There's not a lot more evidence than that, to be honest. That's pretty much it. It's like very hard to confirm. Given that Skechik remains pretty anonymous to this day, it's hard to draw conclusive evidence for this. In the end, it's just speculation. I personally think it's him. I'm not gonna like lie about that. It makes sense to me. Guy who speaks Japanese and previously disappeared from the internet with a false explanation decides to disappear again in order to access a more profitable and accessible market. I mean, it's no secret that the TF2 community is not exactly exploding right now, okay? TF2 is not the hot new game on the market or anything. Meanwhile, the VTuber community is one of the most profitable and rapidly growing on the internet. I honestly could not even blame him for the move. In the end, if you choose to think that it's not him, then that's fine. I'm not going to argue endlessly about it, right? I get that on paper, maybe it doesn't seem super obvious that it's him, but based on my own intuition and genius and high IQ, I'm going to say that I think it's him. Whether you want to be mad at him for that, for like dropping the Skechik thing or, or faking a terminal illness years ago, is ultimately your own prerogative, which I have no involvement in. I know for some VTuber fans, it's kind of seen as like off limits or like a low blow to even acknowledge someone's past before they became a VTuber, before they started this new chapter in their online career. My friend Slacker made a video about all of this and he got some comments from people who were like, even if he is Skechik, just let him be. He's starting a new life as a VTuber instead of doing TF2 content creation anymore. I hope he feels more comfortable being in the Nisanji community. Let's not bring up anything about his past, please, in this live stream. Hey, I'm not sure if you're new to Nisanji or VTubers in general, but it's generally preferred that you don't bring up VTubers' past selves or true identities. Even if you know or think you know who they might be, please keep it to yourself. I mean, true identity, fair enough. Like, it's bad to dox people. Like, it's bad to, <laughs> to post people's, like, private information online. But you can talk about someone's online career, his, his like, public track record. This guy posted all of this publicly over the past few years, so it can be discussed on a public forum. I really do not see the issue personally. So yeah, that about wraps up what I have to say about Skechik and Sonny Briscoe. I don't know for sure if they're the same person. I guess I cannot conclusively prove that it's him. And because of how most VTubers operate, this is never gonna actually be like addressed by Sonny on stream or anything. It would be a complete break of character and ruin the immersion for all of the weebs out there. But at the very least, hopefully this video was like food for thought for you guys. Speaking of this video, it looks like it's almost over, but if you liked it, then be sure to leave a like, and if you disliked it, leave a dislike. Drop a comment down below with your thoughts on all of this. It's always good to hear what you guys have to say, and I will see you all in the next video. The next episode of VTuber, VTuber Drama News. Uh, yeah. Bye.